And now for your hosts this evening, the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Hi, I'm Abby. I have a lot of records and this is Vinyl Monday. I can't film much more in these glasses at all because glare. <laughs> So welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first time here. Vinyl Monday is the series where once a week I sit down and just talk about albums that I love. If 20 minute deep dive episodes aren't your thing, don't worry. I also do Vinyl Monday in 60 seconds, both here on my channel as well as over on my Instagram. Really quick before I jump into this week's video, um, as of yesterday, I have hit 20,000 followers on Instagram and I, whew, I didn't think that was gonna happen. I know for a fact some of you have migrated from YouTube over to my Instagram and made that happen. So for those of you who did that, thank you so much. Would I do a 20K Q&A soon? I think it's possible. You might have guessed this week's record from the little bit at the beginning or my granny glasses but in case you didn't this week's record is get back i mean let it be by the beatles congrats to those who guessed this one if you want to play along all you have to do is check out my community tab i post lots of little fun things over there um i post a running count of how many videos i can make it before I swear five times in one video, thus completing the chord progression of the Beach Boys, our swear. Not a, no, it's our prayer, I said I swear. Oh, that was rough. Anyway, if you want a hint to what next week's album is gonna be, go check out my community tab on my channel. All right, so let's take the plastic off. My copy is an original US copy. It's pretty beat up. If I ever get my hands on the Let It Be Super Deluxe version, I will consider that my upgrade. I bought this at the very end of my freshman year of college. Um, I would walk the whole way down to that record store and back. I remember the day I bought this being particularly on the shine end of the spectrum of rain or shine and very hot. I was worried walking back up that hill that this album was gonna warp because it was very hot and sunny. And now for your hosts this evening, the B-rolls. The Let It Be album art is iconic for its simplicity. This was designed by John Kosh with photography by Ethan Russell. These photos on the front cover, as well as the gatefold, were taken during the Let It Be film production, as well as the Beatles' famous rooftop show at Apple Corps. This album is technically a film soundtrack, as your back cover states. This is a new phase Beatles album, essential to the content of the film Let It Be, was that they performed live for many of the tracks. In comes the warmth and the freshness of a live performance as reproduced for disc by, yeah, we'll get into the rest of that when we talk about the personnel on this thing. Before we get there, you'll see on the labels of my disc that the Let It Be sports the red Apple logo. The Apple logo is red because Let It Be was released in tandem with United Records and not with Capital like all of the previous Beatles releases in the US. Let It Be is the last official Beatles album. Well, kind of. We have John Lennon on vocals, guitar, steel guitar, and six string bass. Paul McCartney on vocals, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, piano, and Hammond organ. George I Don't Wanna Go on the Roof Harrison on vocals and guitar, and Ringo Starr on drums and various percussion. This album features string arrangements by Brian Rogers and a special guest, Billy Preston, plays the keys on this album. He was sort of the fifth Beatle, if you want to say, at the rooftop concert. This album was engineered by channel favorite Glyn Johns, assistant engineered by Alan Parsons, and produced by Phil Spector. And here is where the Let It Be lore begins. 
I'm gonna divert slightly to talk about Beatles canon versus Beatles fanon. So I organize all of my records alphabetically by first name, boo-hoo, go cry about it, mostly regardless of genre, but that's probably gonna change soon. And I organize them chronologically within the respective artists' discographies. All except for the Beatles. I file Let It Be after the White Album, my personal favorite Beatles record, and before Abbey Road, even though Let It Be came out after Abbey Road. You might be wondering, why do I do this? Let It Be was originally supposed to be titled Get Back, and it was supposed to follow the White Album. After the grade A sh show that was recording and assembling the Beatles' White Album, Paul McCartney realizes the band is in serious jeopardy. He wants to kind of go back to basics musically, hoping that that will bridge the gap between the four guys. Jumping at the chance to make more Beatles music, Paul McCartney gets on board with director Michael Lindsay Hogg to make a Beatles TV special. This film, TV special, whatever the hell it's gonna be, I honestly don't think anybody involved really knew what this thing was supposed to be. In early 69, recording sessions for this ambiguous project begin at Twickenham Studios, and the Beatles were not having fun. The gear was shitty, the space was shitty, George was getting electrocuted, everybody hated it. If the goal of this project was to bring the Beatles back together, Twickenham did the exact opposite. The problems that arose just drove them farther apart. So the project moves to Apple Studios and things improve substantially. Um, things are still fractured, but the vibe is a lot more chill. So George Martin did work on Let It Be, but Phil Spector, somewhere along the way, weaseled himself in via Alan Klein, I'm pretty sure, or maybe it was John, I don't know. The Beatles legal saga with Alan Klein could honestly produce an entire video in and of itself, and not a lot of it is really relevant to the content of this album. So I'm gonna be skipping over all that. Anyway, uh, Phil Spector did the final mix, which is why he got his name on this album. You'll also see it on the label of the discs. It says in all cap letters, produced by Phil Spector. So however many minutes into this video on Let It Be, and I'm already gonna be mentioning an alternate mix of this album. There are quite a few. We will get into others in the later parts of this video. Cutting to the chase here, there is a version of Let It Be with all of Phil Spector's editions removed. It's called Let It Be Naked. It came out in 2003, and this used to be your go-to Let It Be mix if you didn't like this iteration of the record. Is it still the go-to? Not anymore. So, for a long time, there was a lot of mythos and misconceptions surrounding the Get Back sessions let It Be, and The Breakup of the Beatles. A lot of these ideas were enforced by the Let It Be documentary, but in 2021, 50 years and change after the release of Let It Be, we got the best insight we've ever gotten on this album by way of Peter Jackson's Get Back documentary. If you somehow haven't seen Get Back, I'm gonna give kind of my rundown version. I watched Get Back when it came out at this time last year. I think when I put up this video it will be a year-ish since Get Back's release. So here are some of my personal observations as a Beatles fan in her 20s. We get an inside look to exactly how the Beatles wrote and worked together. We got to see exactly what made the Beatles such a special group. It was the way they all worked together so well. They were all so in tune with each other, and you need to be on a high level of musicianship to do that. Take that, people who say Ringo is a bad drummer! Get Back 
the film gives us a lot more insight to how the get back sessions really went. For one, scheduling issues split up the sessions. There was a deadline for this new material and all four guys had other things going on. Paul was going really hard on the whole get back project, but there were some issues. Paul also had no idea what Get Back was supposed to be. Was it going to be a show at the Cavern Club? Was it going to be a concert for a hospital of sick children? Were there going to be riverboats? Would it be Pink Floyd at Pompeii Part 2 Electric Boogaloo? No one had any idea, especially Paul. He was kind of, in the beginning parts of the film, he's just kind of making it up as it goes along. As for John, he was going through a lot of upheaval in his personal life. He was on some hard drugs at the beginning of the Get Back sessions. He was attached at the hip to Yoko Ono, and his heart just wasn't really in it anymore. He'd stepped back from that leadership role that he always held in the Beatles, which means Paul steps up. This was a very slow process through Sgt. Pepper's and through the White Album, but by Get Back, Paul is effectively the leader of the Beatles. This is all very new to him. He's still getting used to everything. George is getting frustrated as hell. Paul did not know what Get Back was supposed to be, but he was acting like he knew. This really ticked off George, hence why whenever I hear two of us, I can't unsee George just glaring at Paul through the whole rehearsal of the song. The frustrations continue to build and George leaves the band for a time. George wants to contribute more songs, but it's not as simple as John and Paul not letting him do so. The Beatles, as a group, ran through All Things Must Pass a few times before George pulled it from consideration for the project. At this point, the Get Back concept was taking shape, and it was going to be a no-overdubbing, live-ish recording. Very, very back to basics. And it sounded great as a Beatles tune, but in George's mind, All Things Must Pass didn't fit with the creative vision of what Get Back was supposed to be. And if you ask me, George pulled All Things Must Pass because he realized he was onto something. Through all of this, Ringo is just, you know, being Ringo. Eventually, the guys do come up with the rooftop show. They kind of vote on it three to one with George being that dissenting vote and dropping one of my favorite lines of the entire film, I don't want to go on the roof. I, I don't want to go on the roof. <laughs> I can't remember exactly who suggested it, but someone suggested the rooftop show to Paul and you just see his face light up. Like, yes, this is what I've been chasing after all of this time. This is what Get Back is supposed to be. As chaotic as these sessions would be, they did produce ideas for what would come up on a future Beatles record. There was a flamenco section written into a jam track, and this flamenco bore I Me Mine somehow. Paul suggested that this jam become a rock and roll medley. The rock and roll medley doesn't make it onto Let It Be, but Paul hangs on to the idea for some time in the future. And that scrapped Get Back medley is how Don't Let Me Down came about. I was blown away to see Paul helping John write Gimme Some Truth. Paul apparently didn't remember doing this at all and denied it until Peter Jackson showed him the footage of him helping John with Gimme Some Truth. That was something I really appreciated seeing you as a Beatles fan, you see how sort of the the remnants of the Beatles are sprinkled throughout those first few Beatles solo albums. And I didn't know that Gimme Some Truth 
was an example of this. Patty Boyd has one of the best entrances in any music documentary. I thought her cameo was really cute. It's also suspiciously close in proximity to George mentioning Eric Clapton. If you're anything like me, you know the editors did that on purpose. Eric was the person George turned to when he couldn't get through to Paul or John. He had a big old man crush on Eric and that aged like milk. George, honey, in about a year and a half, you got a big storm coming. And through Get Back, the world and a particular following of young women was introduced to one of the best dressed men to ever live, Glenn Johns. You thought I was done thirsting over Glenn Johns on this channel? Wrong, bitches! Even if my personal thesis of the Get Back film is... Glenn John's hot. The general thesis of Get Back is that these sessions were the last time the Beatles were all on the same page about anything, really. In the time between the Get Back sessions slash the rooftop concert and the breakup of the Beatles, Get Back morphs into the Let It Be album, and the track listing goes as follows. Side one opens with two of us, followed by Dig a Pony. Then comes Across the Universe, followed by I Me Mine, a little ditty called Dig It, then Let It Be, and Side A closes with a snippet called Maggie May. Opening up Side 2, we have I've Got a Feeling, followed by One After 909, then The Long and Winding Road. Next is For You Blue, and the album closes with Get Back, the song. I feel like I have to differentiate between all of these Let It Be's and Get Back somehow, so this is Get Back, the song. Let It Be was released in April of 1970, a full month after the Beatles had broken up. Um, again, the breakup or slow death of the Beatles is drawn out over years, but they're, they're effectively over by March of 1970. Upon its release, reviews for this album were all over the place. Some didn't like it at all, but some liked it. In comparison to Paul and Ringo's first solo albums, which were flops upon release, McCartney 1 would eventually be reevaluated, and Ringo was just being Ringo. So, what do I think of let it be. Going into this one, other than Beatles for Sale, which I still haven't warmed up to, this was the Beatles release I was least familiar with. Right from the get-go, I have some thoughts. These are, in my eyes, the three biggest mistakes that were made with Let It Be. Number one, not titling this project Get Back, or at the very least having Get Back open this album. I mean, hello! The only thing tethering Get Back to being a closer is John's little joke at the end, you know, thank you all on behalf of the group and ourselves and I hope we pass the audition. But all of that falls apart when you listen to alternate takes of these songs and you realize that joke was originally on the end of Two of Us, the opening track! So I am eternally frustrated with the fact that Get Back does not open Let It Be. Mistake number two. Putting the long and winding road on this record and not Don't Let Me Down. So back in my Sgt. Pepper's video, I explained the transition that George was about to make going out of Sgt. Pepper's and into the White Album. He's about to stop writing the George songs like Within You Without You and he's gonna start writing Beatles songs. You know, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Something, Here Comes the Sun. On the other hand, Paul slips out of writing Beatles songs as the Lennon-McCartney partnership falls apart, and he transitions into writing Paul songs. The Long and Winding Road is a beautiful song but it's not a Beatles song. The Long and Winding Road is a Paul McCartney solo track 
with the Beatles name slapped onto it. It has all of the hallmarks of like McCartney one era Paul. Paul should have done what George did with All Things Must Pass and save the long and winding road for McCartney one. I still don't have that record. Uh, gotta rectify that ASAP. Huge oversight on my part. But I do have Ram now. Don't Let Me Down, on the other hand, that is a Beatles song. It is a damn good Beatles song, and it's a shame that they didn't use it on Let It Be. It's even more of a shame that they held on to it for Abbey Road and still didn't use it. Mistake number three. Letting Phil Spector anywhere near this album. Phil Spector botched this album. There, I said it. <laughs> I don't think that's too hot of a take, but if it is, please forgive me. If you've been on this channel for a while, you might have picked up on two of my 10 commandments of how I evaluate an album. Commandment one, thou shalt champion listening to the album as it was originally intended. Two, thou shalt place high value on a thoughtfully organized track listing. The original Let It Be, Phil Spector's Let It Be, has neither of these things. I have a real love-hate relationship with Across the Universe. While yes, it is an amazing song, I struggle with it because this version is nothing like John wanted it to sound like. He wanted it to be very stripped back and this is the exact opposite. The Let It Be Naked version of Across the Universe is the closest to what John wanted the song to be. I also have such a love-hate relationship with the title track, adding all of that extra gobbledygook in, like, like horns and choirs and whatever. It made an otherwise sweet and meaningful track to Paul into something that feels really preachy and self-indulgent, at least this listener thinks so. This track listing is all over the place, sandwiching the title track between Dig It and Maggie May? I respectfully, what the hell? I'm saying it again, Get Back makes no sense as a closer. It is an album opener if I've ever heard one. Of course, the more I think about let it be the album and the more I listen to it, I have no idea what a rightful closer should have been. Uh, should it have been the title track? Uh, should it have been some kind of get back reprise? I think my answer is uh, I wish we were in an alternate universe where they held on to Hey Jude just a little bit longer so it could have closed Let It Be or get back or whatever you want this project to be. Whew, all right, now that we're done with all of the ways that this album really grinds my gears, uh, let's get into my highlights because I do have good things to say about Let It Be. Dig a Pony is on my short list of criminally underrated Beatles songs. Uh, same with One After 909, which I hadn't heard much of at all before listening to Let It Be for this video. As a George girly, I've always really liked I Me Mine. It's a great example of what I call George's baby blues phase, um, where he's hearing the stuff that Clapton was doing and what Bob Dylan was doing with the blues as well. And he was working it into his own style. It's always been one of my favorite George tunes. I'm drawn to the rock and roll and the blues stuff on here, not just because I'm a blues girl. Um, at times, the White Album can get pretty bleak. You can tell their hearts were just not in it. Um, but on the little glimmers of light on Let It Be, the guys sound re-energized. Like I said earlier, they were all on the same page. Though I have a complicated relationship with Across the Universe, it might just be the best song John ever wrote. The lyrics are damn near perfection. He's painting you a picture of this like fantasy galaxy that you're flying through with hair past your knees and a paper cup full of nostalgia for a place you have never been to and you will never be. It is gorgeous. 
and I've got a feeling is late stage Lennon McCartney at their best. They're firing on all cylinders. From that opening guitar line, you know you're in for something special. Everybody had a hard year. Everybody had a good time. All of this being said, in my opinion, the Glyn Johns 1969 mix of Let It Be has rendered this iteration of the album obsolete. If you want to hear Let It Be as it was originally intended, as Get Back, the Glyn Johns mix is the closest we have. Yes, it is a little heavy on the incidental moments. Um, not everybody's going to be a fan of that. Even I could do with some of that fat trimmed out. But that version of Let It Be illuminates maybe the coolest thing about Get Back, and that's the Beatles going back to their old material. You see it in the film. They reworked Please Please Me, they ran through I Lost My Little Girl, and they medleyed Save the Last Dance for Me by the Drifters. Flaming hot fucking take incoming. Don't bother with this Let It Be. Seek out Glynn's mix, or if you really want to, go for Let It Be Naked. But again, Glyn John's Let It Be renders Phil Spector's obsolete. Let It Be's material gets sloppy, but when all the guys are with it, they are really with it. They'd all changed a lot as they grew up, as to be expected. You change the most in your life between the ages of 18 and 32, and these guys had spent all of their 20s together. The force to unite them all was the shared seed from which they all sprouted, and that was rock and roll. Let It Be is a love letter to their younger selves. Um, this record is deeply, deeply flawed, but it's growing on me. My personal favorites are Dig a Pony, I Me Mine, One After 909, For You Blue, and Get Back. If you want to keep up with all my faves, I have a Spotify playlist linked in my description, and that has all of my favorite songs from every Vinyl Monday album I've ever covered on it. And that is it. That is the doozy that is Let It Be. What do you think of Let It Be, the album, or Let It Be, the film, or Get Back, the project, or Get Back, the film, or the song, and ah! Whatever it is, leave a comment letting me know. I love hearing what you guys have to say about the music that I love. And if you like what I do here, you should like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post new episodes of Vinyl Monday every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!